Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? I mean, the world has witnessed some great mysteries and secrets throughout history. Who built the Egyptian pyramids? Was it aliens? What happened to Lord Lucan? Does anybody care anymore? But the more important one, what are Colonel Sanders' famous 11 herb and spices? But one of the greatest puzzles of recent times has been the question, who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Hmm. For those not familiar with the name, Satoshi Nakamoto is the person who is credited with inventing and developing Bitcoin and therefore the blockchain. While it is a mystery for many how Bitcoin, the blockchain and cryptocurrencies actually work, a greater mystery soon evolved when it became apparent that Satoshi Nakamoto might not be the name of a real person at all. Maybe it's a pseudonym. In other words, a fake name. Not only that, people started to speculate that Nakamoto might not be one person, but actually a group of people, a group of software developers. The mystery is compounded by the fact that there has been no word from Nakamoto since 2010, just two years after writing the infamous white paper of Bitcoin that started it all off and revolutionized the world, socially, economically, financially, making many investors extremely wealthy too. Thank you, Satoshi whoever you are. In the early days of blockchain development, communication with Nakamoto was all by email. There were no other details, personal or otherwise. It was impossible to pinpoint an identity, let alone put a face to the name. All we have is the last email that Nakamoto ever sent. It was to another crypto developer and it simply said, moved on to other things. Wow, way to go to leave the scene in a shroud of mystery. And how about this? Satoshi Nakamoto is rumored to have acquired some Bitcoin for themselves. I say some, guess how many? Wait for it, a cool one million. Not one million dollars, one million Bitcoin. It means that it would be worth a staggering 16 billion at today's market price of $16,000 per share. Talk about mastermind. How do we know this if we don't know the real identity of Nakamoto? Aha! Here's where Sergio Damien Lerner comes in. He's the chief scientist at RSK Labs. Now, as you may know, Every crypto, including Bitcoin, has a unique multiple digit address and it's long. And because the blockchain is a public ledger and completely transparent, way to go, all Bitcoin addresses are viewable. Mr. Lerner managed to step back through Bitcoin's blockchain to the very earliest addresses in 2008. These addresses very probably belong to Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin hoard. There is also an element of right time, right place, because Nakamoto was not the first to come up with the crypto concept. What Nakamoto did was solve the problem of double spending, which was holding cryptos back. There needed to be a way of verifying each crypto transaction. Well. Nakamoto found it. The solution became known as the blockchain. Now, obviously, Nakamoto was one step ahead too and had the foresight to grab a good handful of Bitcoin when launched. The fact Nakamoto owns so many Bitcoin is not just fortunate from a wealth perspective. Owning 1 million Bitcoin is also significant because, as you probably know, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin mined. Amazing. It means Nakamoto has 5% of the total number of Bitcoin. And that equates to a lot of market power. But to remain totally anonymous throughout all these years of Bitcoin is quite incredible and just adds to the whole mystique. But after all, would you want people to know that you are one of the richest people in the world? Yet Satoshi Nakamoto must be someone, right? If not a group of people, then at least one. But who are there any suspects? Well, like all great mystery thrillers, You'll have to wait to the end to find out. So keep watching because the answer may surprise you. Or maybe you know the answer already. If so, feel free to share your theory in the comments below. In fact, go ahead and do that now and let's see whether you're right. Now, back to our lineup of suspects. Here's Marcus de Maria's Nakamoto file. We do know some things about Satoshi Nakamoto. For instance, Email timestamps indicate that Nakamoto was posting about cryptos from either the UK or the west or east coast of the states. So, well, that's a bit all over the place. But it seems that Nakamoto used British spelling of certain words. Most interestingly, none of the Bitcoin in his wallet has ever been moved or removed. Will any of these slim clues help us identify the real Satoshi Nakamoto? Let's find out. Okay, so who do we have in our lineup? Actually, we could call them the usual suspects because there are four, four, and they have all been linked at various times to being the real Satoshi Nakamoto. Suspect number one is, strangely enough, Dorian. 
Nakamoto. Haha, is there a clue in the surname? Possibly. Known as Dorian Nakamoto, he's a Japanese American from California, USA. But his full name is actually Dorian Prentice Satoshi. Nakamoto. His birth name is indeed Satoshi Nakamoto, one of a handful of Satoshi Nakamotos living in the States. An academic and engineer, hmm, Dorian graduated in physics from California Polytechnic and worked on classified defense projects. A Newsweek article in 2014 claimed the 64-year-old had told their reporter that he was no longer involved with Bitcoin and that he had turned it over to other people. Dorian claimed that he had misunderstood the question and that the reporter Lee Goodman was referring to one of his classified defense projects. Because there was no direct evidence that Dorian was Bitcoin inventor Satoshi, it could never be proved. The Bitcoin community rallied around Dorian in support. Why? Because they were shocked that Newsweek had printed a photo of Dorian's house, a clear breach of privacy and the whole concept of crypto anonymity, right? Encrypted. Supporters got to work crowdfunding for Dorian. He received 102 Bitcoin around $1 million. Not bad. Curiously, that wallet is now empty. Hmm. Suspect number two is Hal Finney. Finney was a cryptographer, ooh, I think we're getting closer, who coincidentally lived nearby to Dorian Nakamoto. Maybe it was several of them. He was active in the crypto community before and after Bitcoin's launch. He was also the first to receive a Bitcoin in a transaction. It was in 2009 and he received it directly from Satoshi Nakamoto. I mean, come on. Could that mean that Finney, as Satoshi, sent the Bitcoin to himself? Or they're a group of people? Further evidence lies in the fact that when Nakamoto posted the software link to Bitcoin, Finney was the first to download it. There is also correspondence between Finney and Nakamoto. These date from Nakamoto's publishing of the Bitcoin white paper to the early days of Finney running the software. The differences in the email timestamps during the exchanges adds more intrigue to the possibility that Finney and Nakamoto were one and the same. Perhaps Finney's neighbor, Dorian Nakamoto, supplied the inspiration for the Satoshi surname. Either way, Finney always denied he was the inventor of Bitcoin. So would I, come on. Unfortunately, if Finney is the real Satoshi Nakamoto, he has taken that secret to the grave as he sadly passed away in 2014 at the age of 58 from Lou Gehrig's disease. Okay, suspect number three, Craig Wright. In contrast to Dorian Nakamoto and half Finney, Craig Wright actually claims that he is Satoshi Nakamoto and has never been shy in repeating that claim. Then I, I don't think he is then. Wright, an Australian scientist and statistician with two doctorates, first came to prominence following his appearance via Skype at the 2015 Bitcoin Investors Conference in LA. He described himself as being a bit of everything and that he had been involved with all this for a long time. Wired Magazine decided to investigate and came up with the evidence, including references on Wright's blog to a cryptocurrency paper that appeared months before the Bitcoin white paper was published, leaked emails and correspondence concerning a P2P distributed ledger, peer-to-peer, -peer, plus leaked transcripts of meetings with attorneys and tax officials that quote Wright as saying he did his best to try and hide the fact that he had been running Bitcoin since 2008. And he said, by the end of this, I think Half the world is going to bloody know, Wright added. This evidence appears to have been greatly flawed. Inconsistencies were discovered, blog entries appear to be backdated, as were public encryption keys linked to Satoshi Nakamoto. These allegations prompted Vitalik Buterin, co-founder of Ethereum, to publicly denounce Wright as a fraud. Having said that, in December 2021, Wright faced a civil lawsuit brought against him by the estate of David Kleiman deceased. The estate claimed that Wright and Kleiman created Bitcoin together and argued that Kleiman was therefore entitled to half of Wright's estimated 1.1 million BTC. Now the jury rejected the lawsuit, but the Kleiman estate was awarded $100 million. Does this imply that the jury and the court believe Wright and Kleiman did in fact collaborate on the inception of Bitcoin? Maybe. Another curiosity surrounding Wright occurred the same year when a UK court ordered Bitcoin.org to take down the Bitcoin white paper, citing that the website was violating Wright's copyright of the white paper. Again, 
This implies the court believed Wright had intellectual rights to the paper in some way, or very mysterious. On to suspect number four, and possibly the strongest candidate as the real Satoshi Nakamoto, Nick Zabo. Now this is exciting because I've actually met Nick. Zabo is a computer programmer and cryptographer who graduated from the University of Washington in 89 with a degree in computer science. He then attained a law degree. Seven years later and Zabo comes up with the concept of smart contracts. That's interesting, but Bitcoin doesn't have smart contracts so... In 98, he creates Bitgold. Now, that is interesting. This project never reached a conclusion, but Zabo stated that one of its goals was to be an alternative to the traditional financial system. The Assen University Center for Forensic Linguistics then conducts a study of the Bitcoin white paper to uncover Nakamoto's identity and conclude there are linguistic similarities to Zabo. It also appears there are a large number of phrases in the white paper that occur in Zabo's writings. He also uses the open open source document platform Latex. The Bitcoin white paper was written using Latex. Last but not least, Elon Musk has come out and stated that, in his opinion, Zaba is the most likely to be the inventor of Bitcoin. That means I might know him. <laughs> However, perhaps the most compelling evidence of all centers on the fact that Zabo spent some time working for Digicash as an internet commerce consultant. Digicash was created by David, is it Shaum or Shaum? Another early pioneer of digital and cryptocurrency. Digicash even launched eCash, right? The first ever digital cash. Digicash didn't last long, it folded in 98. Now curiously, it was in 98 that Zabo created his own Bitgold. Hmm. More importantly, perhaps, it was Zabo who realized that Shorm's DigiCash failed because it relied on third-party involvement. It was centralized. Zabo discovers that it was way too easy to interfere with people's accounts if they wanted to. In essence, the third parties are security holes. Pretty compelling, right? But what does Zabo say? Well, like all the others, he strenuously denies being Satoshi Nakamoto. Well, apart from Craig Wright. So, what are we to make of all of this? Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Is it one person or more than one? I know what I think. How about you? Thanks for watching and please do let us know who you think is the real Satoshi Nakamoto in the comments below. Maybe one of the four? I can't wait to see what you think. Also, please do give us a like if you found this video interesting and please do make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on valuable content which will help you grow your wealth and that of your family. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.